What's up guys, Luke Deutschliner here with another video. If you guys like my videos, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Today I had a eBay return case that got shipped back to me. Uh, I was on a Galaxy Note 9. It was cracked on both sides. It was for AT&T and it was a financed phone. I believe there was still a balance owed on it, unfortunately. And so the seller got the item and decided to issue a return once they got the phone. However, in the description, I did write that the phone was network locked and that it could only be used on AT&T or Straight Talk. Just an FYI for people out there who do not know, any AT&T phone that has a balance owed on it can be used on Straight Talk with the Straight Talk AT&T compatible SIM card, which helps you sell AT&T phones. It's a good selling point when you can list it that it will work for AT&T or Straight Talk. It's also a good seller if you're selling it locally. A lot of people use Straight Talk, at least they do in my area. So that being said, guys, in today's video, we're going to be talking about when you should accept a return and when you should deny it. So in today's case, guys, this was a phone and a return case that I decided to accept. And the reason being is I didn't sense any shadiness from the buyer when it came to returning the phone. He didn't really have any, you know, malicious messages. He didn't threaten me in any way or anything like that. And so I knew that I was going to get the phone back and I really didn't sense, you know, anything going wrong with the return. And that's always a good sign, guys. If you guys are, you know, approaching a return or you get nasty messages from a buyer, chances are it's possible that the buyer might manipulate you by sending back a different phone or, you know, they might have opened the phone or cracked the phone or broke the phone or they might have tried to unlock it or altered the device in a way. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit later in this video, uh, you know, just kind of how to handle situations like that. But that being said, the phone uh, return went really good. I actually got it back today. The buyer sent it back with signature tracking, which was smart on his part. I signed for it, opened the phone right there in front of the postman. Everything was all good. Everything was perfect. Now, what was super awesome about this, and this doesn't always happen, especially because it was Samsung phone, I actually got inside and I just hit relist on my eBay listing under the return section where I sold the item. I hit relist and the phone actually sold in about two minutes. Basically, as soon as I got done clicking relist and exited out of my browser, I got a notification saying that the phone sold. So I actually packaged it up today and shipped it out. So that's super awesome. That's like a win-win situation because when, when you guys do get returns, from buyers that are decent people and they're not trying to scam you or be shady or threaten you it's always good to just accept the return guys and the reason being is you don't want to get bad feedback from a buyer that can affect your eBay scores, it can affect your power seller status, and it can also get your account restricted in the smartphones or electronics category just because of the fact that you have a certain amount or a defect rate or a customer satisfaction rate that's lower than standard. So that being said, guys, this was a very, very good return. I was very happy with it. Um, initially, you know, I wasn't happy with the return. I just, I just accepted it and said, yes, you know, no problem. I did inform the buyer that it would work on AT&T or Straight Talk. They said that they still didn't want to keep it. So I said, no problem, return it and I'll give you a full refund. So that being said, let's talk about when you should not accept a return. So if a buyer threatens you and sends you a message such as, you need to accept the return or I will leave you bad feedback. Or if the buyer sends you a message saying, you need to accept the return, there's water damage inside the phone. So here's how you play a message like this. So if a buyer sends you a message and says, this phone has water damage, what you need to send the buyer, and you have to do this on eBay messages, do not send it via email, do not send it via text message if the buyer offers you to call them or talk to them on the phone, you need to send the buyer a message stating this. Did you alter the device? Did you alter the device, sir? Word it like that. Um, the keyword is alter. There's a policy deep within eBay's policies basically stating that if a buyer alters the device in any way, shape, or form, meaning taking it apart, purchasing an unlock code for it, or taking it into a store and having something bent or fixed or you know if there's a chip in the glass or anything if the device is altered in any way guys it completely voids the return so what you guys basically need to do is when a buyer is you know speaking broken English and it's you know typically broken English is usually somebody overseas or somebody that's just basically trying to scam you um, I don't know I'm sure you guys have seen this a lot on eBay there's a lot of buyers that basically they'll try and scam you and they speak broken English typically because they're foreign scammers and you know they might even be on a eBay stealth account 
For those of you guys that don't know what an eBay stealth account is, it's somebody who's been banned from eBay multiple times typically, or multiple aliases, and then they actually have to purchase an eBay stealth account in somebody else's name, etc., and yada, yada, yada. Not a place you want to be, not something you want to have to do. So when a buyer sends you guys a message stating that you know the phone uh, won't work on a certain phone company, or let's just say the buyer says the phone isn't unlocked, um, or the phone is water damaged, or anything internal with the device, or if they make a threat saying that the device is not as described and that it's broken, you need to try and send basically a interrogation message. Basically, you don't wanna just come out and say, did you alter the device? But you wanna throw that word alter in there and just say something like this. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, sir, and I'm sorry that you know, you're having problems with the purchase, so I have to ask you, how do you know that the device has water damage? Did you open the device and alter it? Or did you open the device? If you use the word open, guys, when it's in a situation like this in a return and there's already previous messages kind of backing what the buyer's saying that you know they probably did open or alter the device, open is a good word too. Uh, just because of the fact if they did open the device, that would be uh, you know altering it. Unless it was opened at a Apple certified repair store, if we're talking iPhones here, or then Samsung, same thing. And if they don't have any proof of that and they did it themselves, then it'll completely void the return. I've had this happen a few times where basically I sold the phone for parts only. It was a cracked screen phone, it was not working. It turned on, LCD was fine and everything like that, but it was listed as parts only and it said in the description that this phone is cracked. It's also a secondhand phone and I do not know the history of it other than the fact that it has a clean ESN, the LCD has no burn spots, and that it works fine and as it should. I do not know the history of this phone or you know past damages, etc., but everything is tested and working. So in this particular example, I believe this was an iPhone 7 Plus that I sold. This was a while ago. And basically the buyer got the phone, guys. And he said, well, the phone's fine and everything, but I see that it had prior water damage. And so I just sent a message back and I said, I'm sorry for any inconvenience. I did put in my listing that I didn't know the history of the phone. How do you know that the phone had water damage? Question mark. The buyer sends a message back and says, well... I just took the screws off the back and I opened it and I seen that there is water damage on the inside. It might not have been recent, but I seen that there was. So I just sent back a message and I said, oh, I see. So you altered the device by opening it. The buyer sent back, yes, I opened it. So I called eBay and I told them to look at the eBay messages and told them that the buyer was not a certified Apple technician. And I said that he was opening the device and I did put in my listing that it was a secondhand phone and eBay actually just completely closed out the case. Um, it's, it's really funny when you guys know, you know, what words to say and how to like trip scammers up or people up on eBay, uh, how easily you can actually win return cases. I know return cases are nightmares for a lot of people, but if you know what to say, it's actually not all that bad. Now, the big reason guys, why there's a fine line between accepting and denying returns is because of the fact that when people say the phone has water damage or, oh, it's not as described. What's really sad is there's the scammer that's a little bit smarter than the average one. So the ones that are kind of, I guess you could call them like a level one scammer, um, they'll actually try and like completely bait and switch the item and send you something different back. And eBay's gotten a lot better about that. But the scammers that are kind of level two, that basically they don't want to risk it all or risk their whole account, they will make a claim such as past water damage or the phone has scratches that weren't pictured or something like that or, oh, I can't unlock the phone. What they do, guys, is they try and do this hoping to leverage something over you, hoping that as a good eBay seller that you will offer the buyer a partial refund and the buyer already knew what they were getting. They're just playing it off that they didn't know what they were purchasing and they're trying to basically get extra money out of you in hopes that you won't just have them return the device. So like I said, guys, as you kind of get to know eBay and kind of get to know the whole buying selling system and just how people are on there, you guys will understand the marketplace and kind of understand when you should, you know, accept or deny a return. So like I said, if the buyer is being, you know, really nice and courteous to you and seems honest and isn't giving you any problems about the return, uh, chances are I would just hit accept on it, guys. Just accept it, get it out of the way, get the phone back, check it out, and then, uh, you know, accept the return and go on your way and relist it. It'll resell anyways. So you do not want to get, you know, a ton of negative feedback ratings on your eBay account. That's the best way to get banned. I know so many people that get banned on eBay or they get suspended. And the reason being is, is they get like in this vengeful mentality or attitude, which is just not the way to go. 
Um, you know, I know when you're mad, it's nice to feel like, oh, I'm going to get back at them. But really, you're just screwing yourself because uh, a lot of the times, you know, it's just the cost of the business uh, or it's just the cost of business as far as inconvenience wise. You know, you just got to accept the return. I know we're not Walmart or anything like that, but it's just best to, you know, be courteous and just make sure you guys are looking for these key things that basically happen when you're engaging in buying and selling smartphones and electronics. Uh, one bad thing about buying smartphones and electronics, it is the highest fraud industry on eBay. There's the most returns in this category, etc. There's a lot of scammers that, you know, they, they try and scam people. So this is just something that everybody should watch out for and you guys really need to kind of get, uh, you know, in tune with these terms that I just talked about and kind of read in between the fine lines when you're going to accept or deny a return. And after you guys watch this video, as long as you retain the information I said here, you should be able to know you know which uh, which buyer and you know wh who's gonna scam you and who's not going to after a certain amount of time you guys will basically you know it'll just be like looking at the back of your hand you'll know this person's gonna be good to me and they're gonna send me back the phone and this person's just trying to scam me or they're trying to exploit money out of my pocket by getting me to offer a partial refund that's another one is when somebody says you need to accept the return or you need to give me a partial refund or I'm gonna leave you bad feedback. That's a big one too, guys. You can easily call eBay if they say, offer me a partial refund or I'm gonna leave you bad feedback. That's basically a threat, guys, from them to you stating that if you don't give me money, they're basically gonna try and exploit money out of you. And in turn, if you don't, you're gonna they're gonna leave you bad feedback. If you guys get those messages, not a problem. Call eBay and make sure you bring up that point to them and let them know that you're basically a very good seller and that you don't have problems like these and that this buyer is just trying to exploit you. You guys need to make a case with eBay. And if you guys do that and you know present yourself in a good manner and you know never lose your cool, by the way, on the phone with the eBay reps. If you guys are getting somebody that does not speak good English, you can simply ask for a supervisor. So just something to keep in mind when you guys are dealing on eBay. I know it can be very frustrating. Like I said, there are scammers out there, but if you know how to deal with them, it can all be managed. You can avoid getting your account banned. You can keep your good feedback. And you know, hopefully most of the time, come to a agreement with a buyer where you're not going to get scammed they don't get scammed or you know there's no hurt feelings and if you do come across a scammer like i said just make sure you guys are looking for these terms and make sure you guys trip them up in messages and then once you do that simply call ebay just do your best to do that and the funny thing about these foreign scammers is they always reply they they don't they won't ever just ignore you because it, it's kind of funny it's like they think replying to you is going to get them out of you know the guilt or the, the shame that they've already done. So it's pretty easy to trip them up, guys. Uh, you just gotta be smarter than them, and that's the way it's done. The next time this happens, I probably will film a video for you guys, and I will show screen capture and show you exactly how I trip people up when they're trying to scam, uh, you know, or get partial refunds or exploit money, you know, and threatening to leave bad feedback. So anyways, guys, I really hope this video helps you. I know eBay returns are a big frustration out there. It's it's something that it's just it's never fun to wake up to a return, especially when somebody's trying to scam you and they're not being genuine about the return. So that being said, everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like, share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.